The sanctuary was decorated with flowers. Everyone was seated in their seats. The groom and friends of the groom stood to the right of the altar, and the bridesmaids stood to the left. Everything was ready, but not everyone was ready. Where is he, Mom? Why isn't Daddy here to marry off his only daughter? I don't know, Teresa. Uh, hold on. I just got a text message from him. The hopeful look with which she opened the message soon dissolved. What's he saying, Mom? An unavoidable delay. Have the wedding without me. What? That's all he said? No explanation? No. Darling, we have to go ahead with the wedding. Nicholas and I have spent too much money to waste. But who's going to walk me down the aisle? It's ridiculous to go alone. Wait, what about Gordon? You don't want people to know he's your birth father, do you? Well, if you don't mind everyone knowing he's been your lover since he knocked you up. Now is not the time to argue. I'll have your Uncle Frank do it. Ugh, damn. Looks like we don't have a choice. Nora entered the sanctuary and took Frank back to the locker room. Frank, you're going to have to walk Teresa down the aisle. Nick can't make it. What? Why me? Why not? We don't have time to argue. Go, go, go. Nora was seated up front, and soon afterward the crowd stood as the bride and her uncle Frank made their way down the middle aisle of the church. Frank had a little trouble asking, Who is giving this woman in Mariagi? Finally, he stammered and said, Her mother and my son-in-law. The service went on and everyone was wondering where Nick was. When they reached the ring exchange ceremony, a man walked down the aisle with several large manila folders under his arm. Silence reigned in the room. Standing in front of Nora, he held out one of the folders to her. Nora Dexter, you have been served with a petition for divorce on the grounds of adultery. It is alleged that you had a long-term affair. She was handed one of the envelopes. Nora stood there in shock. The man walked back down the aisle and stopped halfway down. He turned to his right and said, Gordon Black, you are charged with the following. Alienation of affection, 18 years of alimony, and a bill for your daughter's wedding expenses. Handing him the folders, the man walked out. Gordon's wife slapped Gordon in the face and left. At that moment, the wedding died. People left, making snide remarks along the way. After a while, only Nora and Gordon remained. Gordon said, I guess now we don't have to worry about Nick finding out. Do you think your wife will divorce you? Only if the sun comes up tomorrow morning. Will you need a place to stay tonight? I probably don't want to go home right now. Well, you can come with me then. Everyone knows about us anyway. I've got some good bourbon to get drunk on. They got to Nora and Nick's house and found it surrounded by fire trucks. Gordon approached the crew chief. Definitely arson. Heavy use of accelerant, probably gasoline. Gordon went back to Nora. Nick burned everything. Let's go to a hotel. Let's go to a hotel that people who were at the wedding wouldn't go to. That's a good idea. Nora went to get a room for Gordon and herself. Her credit card was declined. Gordon gave them his, and it worked out. Nora tried to call Nick about the card, but when she called, she was told, This number is no longer in service. She sighed and said, Scorched earth. For good reason, Gordon and Nora were not motivated to have sex. The only time in twenty years they had not had sex was barely outside the hotel room door. So, Nora, what do we do? I need to go to the computers in the hotel business center and see if Nick has taken all our money. She did and he did. Gordon, I'm brokey until I can get my half of the money back. Check to see if you have any more money. He did, and he did have the money. I should probably withdraw a large sum before my wife takes it. Gordon managed to withdraw $10,000 before his account was frozen. Gordon, I think we're both going to need lawyers. Right now, I want to get drunk. I agree. Gordon and Nora got drunk and passed out on the bed, fully clothed. They came downstairs for breakfast in crumpled clothes. 
Nora, do you have a place to stay? I'm going to call Candace and see where I stand. I may have to stay somewhere else, too. Just hope she doesn't say she never wants to see me again. Good luck. I will ask my daughter if I can stay with her. Right now I need to go to Walmart and get some clothes and toiletries. What are you going to pay for them with? I forgot. Gordon, can I borrow some money from you? Sure. Gordon drove her to the church where her car had been left. That one was gone. Nick had a spare key and could have just driven away in it. Now Gordon had to take her to Walmart and wait while she shopped. He informed Nora that Candace had given him permission to come home, at least long enough to pack some things. Nora called her daughter. Teresa, it's your mom. Mom, how could he? I thought Daddy loved me. He may have ruined my marriage. Johnny won't talk to me now. What am I going to do? I don't know. I know I need a place to stay. Can I stay with you for a while? Why don't you come home? Or did your stubborn father kick you out? No, he burned me out. What? Yeah, he burned down our house. He's probably going to get arrested for arson. Dad burned down our house? He'd have to be awfully evil to do that. That's an understatement. I think you can stay at my place. But if Johnny calls and wants to come back, you'll leave. It's a deal. I'll be right over. Oh, can't you pick me up? Legal Proceedings A fire inspector pressed charges against Nick. Nick pleaded not guilty and went to trial. In the interim, he remained in jail instead of being released on bail. Nora and her lawyer used this time to try to find out where the money he had taken was. She figured he must have turned it into cash and stashed it in some place he refused to reveal. Nora waited until after the trial to file for divorce on the advice of her attorney. He said a guilty verdict would make for a good divorce proceeding. The prosecutor brought in an arson expert to testify that the fire was an act of arson. Nick's attorney asked no questions. The prosecutor then called Nora to testify about what was going on that might have motivated Nick to burn down their house. She said they argued over wedding items, and then he didn't show up to walk his daughter down the aisle. This time, Nick's attorney asked questions. Miss Dexter, are you aware that perjury is a crime? Objection. Affects the credibility of the witness. Overruled, but watch yourself. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mrs. Dexter, why did you lie about your daughter being Mr. Dexter's daughter? She is his daughter. It's his name on the birth certificate. He raised her with me her whole life. Does the birth certificate list the name of her biological father? Silence. No. There was a murmur from the crowd. Whose name should appear on the birth certificate as the father? Gordon Black. How long have you and Mr. Black been hornswoggling your husband? Our entire marriage. The judge interrupted. Mr. Conlon. Do you realize you're establishing motive for your client? Yes, Your Honor. My client would rather publicize his wife's infidelity than avoid the consequences of his actions. If that's the case, I find Mr. Dexter guilty of arson. After a short recess, I will hear sentencing recommendations. Upon returning from recess, the prosecutor stated that the facts are not in dispute. Mr. Dexter intentionally set fire to the house he shared with his wife and until recently, his daughter. Almost all of Mrs. Dexter's belongings and some of Miss Dexter's belongings were destroyed. Since insurance does not cover arson, the only satisfaction she can get is to send her husband away for as long as the law allows. She will sue him for divorce and compensation for all she has lost. Nick's attorney spoke up. My client burned down his house? Yes. But the key word is that it was his house. The deed to the house was not in his wife's name. All of her and her daughter's belongings are in plastic bags in a storage unit, the key to which I'm handing over to her attorney right now. Your Honor, we ask you to consider what would be the normal reaction of any man learning that his wife had sex with another man before and throughout their 22-year marriage. This illicit sex resulted in the birth of a baby girl that his wife and later his daughter deliberately passed off as his own. Their divorce and related litigation will decide the equitable division of property, but since there is no substantial loss of property on Mrs. Dexter's part, we believe Mr. Dexter should receive the minimum penalty. As he left, Nick said to Nora, See you in divorce court. Divorce. Coming into the divorce hearing, Nick looked good. He had been working out, and it had helped him lose pounds and tone his muscles. Nora, on the other hand, looked terrible. 
Gordon made a deal with his wife that they would stay together. It turned out that Gordon's wife had also been unfaithful. They agreed to forgive each other one last time, but Candace was to control all the money from now on. He moved back home. Nora suffered financially and socially. The divorce was her chance to get back to normal. The money Nick owed her would give her a chance to rebuild, perhaps in another city. Your Honor, Mrs. Dexter is demanding half of all assets that were in their accounts, based on a list of all assets from six months ago. She's demanding half of what Mr. Dexter made from the sale of the land on which their house stood. In addition, she is demanding alimony of $2,000 a month for five years. Mr. Stevens? My client was cheated on by his wife and her lover for over 20 years. My client was led to believe that the child his wife gave birth to was his. He loved that child and had been an exceptionally good father for over 18 years. It wasn't until he overheard a conversation between his wife and daughter the day before their wedding that he learned that his wife had been tooting his horn for his entire marriage. We have the tape for replay. Objection. Neither my client nor her daughter authorized the recording. This isn't criminal court. Family court has more lenient rules. I'd like to hear the tape. Yes, Your Honor. The tape. Mom, you know what would be cool for the wedding? Honey, we're already over budget. It's not going to cost anything. Okay, what would be cool? If both of my dads walked me down the aisle, Gordon and Nick. She giggled. Are you out of your fucking mind? I spent 20 years carefully making sure Nick never found out. Even poor, gullible, ignorant Nick might guess if you did. No, it's too big a risk. If the risk of fucking Gordon for over 20 years is worth it, why not just leave daddy for Gordon? Because your dad's a great husband and father. He's the everyday man I want to come home to. Gordon, on the other hand, is the man who comes around every once in a while to give me sex. It's simple. I like Nick for marriage and Gordon for sex. That's not to say your dad's bad in bed, but Gordon's great. I've always wanted them both. I don't even know which one I'd choose if I had to. I wish I could tell my girlfriends that my real dad is Gordon. They all think Nick's a nerd. The tape stopped. The judge ruled that the wife would get an equal division of property, but reduced the child support to $1,000 a month and only for three years. Nick agreed. He had just received a quarter of a million dollars from Gordon to settle all three lawsuits against him. He took that money to buy a condo near his work. A few months later, Dad. Sorry, Teresa. Gordon's not here. Dad. You know you're the only real father I ever had. Gordon was just Mom's sex toy. How long have you known I'm not your father? Not until the trial, like everyone else. Your mom didn't tell you about the divorce hearing? Yeah. She got half the assets and some alimony. Did she tell you about the tape? What tape? the one I made the week before the wedding between you and your mother, where you ask Gordon and me to walk you down the aisle. Oh, shit. Whatever I said, I didn't mean it. I was just joking with my mom. Gordon means nothing to me. Well, you just admitted you lied to me. You've known about Gordon for a long time and you never told me. My mom would kill me if I told you. You can't blame me for that. Yes, I can. Luckily, chronologically, you're an adult. From now on, I'm not responsible for anything you do, father, or not. You're still gonna pay for college for me, right? You promised. I'm sorry you lied to me and I lied to you. Dad, don't hang up. Dad! At the coffee shop. Do you mind if I sit next to you, Nick? Uh-uh. Are you here by accident or on purpose? On purpose. I wanted to talk to you after we both calmed down. So, Nora, you think I've calmed down? I hope so. I wanted to give myself a chance to say I was sorry. Truly sorry. The sex with Gordon was good, but it wasn't worth our marriage. We got away with it for so long that I took you for granted. What I miss most about our marriage is the friendship. I miss being able to talk to you, especially when we're cozying up on the couch. You were my best friend in addition to being my husband. 
I valued both. Nick, isn't there a chance we can go back to being just friends? You still mean a lot to me. I'm surprised. No requests for money. No asking you to forgive our daughter. No anything. Sorry to disappoint you, but no. It's hard to live with someone for over 20 years and just abruptly break up with them. Despite our divorce, I never stopped caring about you. If you want, we can meet at Starbucks or some other neutral place if you're willing to meet me. Maybe. The exasperation isn't as strong as it was when I first found out. This may surprise you, but I also miss the times when we just talked. You're a smart woman with good ideas. I think we could try, at the very least. I mean, we can always stop if we want to. Tuesday night works for me. Besides talking, I'll never get tired of reminding you how worthless you thought I was in bed. Nick smiled. You know very well that I loved you and I enjoyed our sex life. Let's not talk about that anymore. When we meet, it should be off the list of topics. Tuesdays work for me, too. For several months, the Tuesday meetings went well. Despite how their marriage ended, there were many shared fond memories, even if they were just fond memories. Nick was the only one who had talked about them going to her house to talk away from prying ears. Nora agreed because she wanted to snuggle up to each other, talk and drink something other than expensive coffee. They both began to feel like old times. Nora began to feel safe when she broached the subject that was going to make him invite her to live with him again. Nick, do you enjoy these weekly conversations and reminiscences? Yes, very much. I'm glad you offered to do it. You know what else would be fun? What? Nora felt it was time to take a risk. There's something else I've been missing. When we were married, after we talked, most of the time we'd go upstairs, take off all our clothes, and enjoy each other. Can we do that tonight, please? Nick thought about the suggestion for a moment, then smiled and said, Nora, go upstairs and get the bed and yourself ready. I, on the other hand, will prepare drinks for us and be up shortly. Yes, dear. She ran up the stairs. Nora was almost ecstatic. Her plan to slowly entice Nick had worked. Once she convinced him that he could satisfy her sexually, they would be together again. She decided not to wear the nightgown, no matter how sexy it looked. She threw off her clothes and lay on the bed, inviting him to enjoy her body. She waited and waited. Something wasn't right. She threw on a robe and went downstairs. Nick, where are you, honey? There was no answer. Nora saw something on the kitchen table. It was a note. Imminent delay. You don't have to wait for me. You can go fuck yourself.